how you doing? It's Zach Allen. So by popular request, right, we had a couple comments of people that really wanted to see some stuff on ball position. And I know some people might start to turn away right away. It's not boring. It's very important. And if you're like the people that I see on a daily basis in person, it's something that can definitely get overlooked and missed. Okay, so stay tuned and see if you actually were able, would be able to explain ball position as I'm explaining it. Because there's two choices of ball position. We have one that's called a universal ball position, which basically, you know, I've got some painter's tape here on the ground. And I would recommend you do that. Next time you go out to the driving range, grab a little roll of tape, whatever tape you want, tape it down on the ground. I've got this little half T. The forward line is my target, and this perpendicular line is basically going to kind of give me my ball position. But it's a great way to consistently set up, right? It's something that I have overlooked time and time again in my career, and I go searching in really complicated places to find what's wrong, and it was my ball position. It was something very simple. So if you can keep that well, you're off on a great foot towards more consistency, right? But back to the universal ball position. This is something that greats like Jack Nicholas and Ben Hogan prescribed. Basically, it just goes to where the ball is always positioned about an inch and a half inside my lead heel. And all we do is we just move this trail foot around, right? So you watch these players when they come in and set up, they put the club down, they put their left heel an inch and a half from that blue line. And then if I'm hitting a seven iron, which I am, I know my trail foot's going to be about right here. So in effect, the ball for a seven iron is a little forward of center, right? If they were going to hit, say this was a driver, right? Obviously it'd be longer, but the driver would be out here. So in effect, they've moved their center more behind. They moved their head more behind the ball, which allow them to hit up, but they're keeping it in the same spot in relation to this Adidas logo on my shirt. Okay. Even when they're chipping, right? It's still an inch and a half inside my lead heel, but they're only going to put their foot like right here. So now this logo actually falls ahead of the ball, right? Which is a great position for chipping the ball. So to me, it's something that I probably prescribe the most because there's consistency. Um, there's not a lot of guesswork because as long as you hit this lead heel point, you're going to know, okay, right? Here's my nine iron. Here's my five iron. Here's my three wood. It doesn't take a whole lot of guesswork there, right? Because it's basically staying the same in relation to the lead side of my body. And you get the added benefit. I think when people go to this ball position, it's easier for them to keep their head behind this, this imaginary blue ball line that I'm seeing here with this painter's tape. I see so many people that come into me and they're trying to compress the ball. They're trying to hit it with, you know, a little bit more um, penetration to get more distance. They're trying to hit down on the ball and they start creeping this thing back here and their head is in front of the golf ball. Now I see all these levers straighten out before impact and they might actually compress it that way, hit down on it. But the problem is they're losing so much leverage because all their, all their mass is ahead of the golf ball, right? When I go to pick something up, I get underneath and I pick it up with, with this mass, right? So when we go to hit a golf ball, it's really important, even if we want to compress it and trap it, hit down on it, you notice how my upper body is still slightly behind the golf ball. My head is just ever so slightly behind the ball. Set up, impact. So I think respecting this imaginary line right here in my lead heel and knowing this will cross it, but my upper body will never cross it. Okay, so that's the universal ball location. The next one is what I call a floating ball location. It doesn't float much. Tiger Woods does this. A, a number of great players do this. Basically, it goes from middle of my stance to maybe about four ball positions, okay? So the farthest forward would obviously be driver. The one in the middle would be like, say, sand wedge through eight iron. So if I had an eight iron in my hands right now, I would go equal steps on both sides to get it right in the middle. And you notice on this one, my head is a little bit more on top of the golf ball. I will prescribe this usually to people who are not as mobile down here, not as much kind of lateral, pelvic, leg, hip drive, whatever you'd want to call it. Maybe they're a little bit more kind of moving with their upper body. Obviously, Tiger's not that way, so it worked for him. It doesn't always have to be that. But this ball position only fluctuates by a little more than four inches, right? So we've got sand wedge through eight iron right here, okay? Probably like seven iron through four iron up here. 
hybrid and three wood, and then the farthest forward would be driver. And by the time we get to that one, it's probably touching the inside of my left instep, right? And with all those, we would be varying the stance width slightly to help accommodate just that club, right? The reason for varying the stance width also is just as you try to hit a ball harder, we need to get wider and get lower. I see a lot of people when they go to set up with an iron, right? They look like this with say a nine iron and then they get their four iron out and they still look like this. It's like, nah, you wanna start getting down here just a little bit. That lower center of gravity helps you to get the ball up in the air and gener generate a little bit more ground force. So like I said, I would try to start by just being a little methodical, maybe once every month, once every couple months, put some alignment sticks down, put some tape on the ground, and just double check your ball position just to make sure you know you're in the right spot. I've done it so many times it becomes second nature. Now, in order to get to where I'm hitting the ball first, I'm just gonna glide my hips forward and get to impact up here, right? But I'm never really crossing that ball line with my upper body. I'm only doing it with my lower center. Lower center, upper center. This one goes forward, this one stays back. If we get that happening this way, you can see I'm gonna be in trouble. So you'll go in there and, okay, here's a chip shot. Little one, almost no step with my right. Okay, here's a driver. Left heel, same place, bigger with my right, and that gives me a little bit more right side bend at address, which we know is good for launching that driver high. And then I feel a little bit more down and in my hips, a little more down and in my glutes when I get that driver out. So that narrower stance, right? If I was hitting a pitching wedge, same spot with my left, maybe only right there. So it's narrow and I'm a little bit more vertical, which is great for hitting a pitching wedge, right? We're trying to kind of hit it with negative loft, right? You've got negative loft and positive loft. Negative loft is you're trying to launch your short irons lower than their design. So we're trying to de-loft our pitching wedge. Positive loft is driver. You're trying to launch it higher than its design. A nine degree driver should launch maybe 12, 13 degrees for a lot of people to maximize distance. Most often when the ball position's not right, those aspects are not right. Someone's hitting their pitching wedge, it's going much too high and they're losing distance. And then they get driver out and it's going much too low with too high a spin and they're losing distance. So take a page from the greats. I see so many good tour players that work on their ball position. You know how many times I see amateurs out on the driving range work on it? I could probably in 30 years count it on one hand how many times I've seen them work on their ball position. But it's an important thing. Not the sexiest thing, I know, but something that's hugely important and will save you from getting into a swing slump. So check out those two different ones. And if, uh, if, if you knew what I was going to talk about and you could have explained those ball positions that well, give me a comment, right? Uh, let me know why. Um, or if you caught something new there or you have a question, Give me a comment and give me a little feedback on what you thought of this video. Until then, I'll see you next time. Get that ball position in check and start hitting some better golf shots. Thanks for watching. After thousands of student lessons, I've discovered that the single weakest link in your golf swing is your brain. You see, our brains control all our movement. But as it turns out, they aren't naturally wired for the golf swing. And until you fix this, your body will simply refuse to do what the brain is asking. The good news is there's an easy fix. Since I don't have the time in this short video, I put together a three-part web class where I walk you through a simple process that will rewire your brain, giving you the control you need for a consistent golf swing. I call it the Consistency Clinic, and you get the entire thing free of charge by clicking the link right here. The training series isn't available anywhere else, so go ahead, click the link right now, and I'll see you on the other side.